I'm basically just stealing ideas from the 90s and the early 2000s and then just like slamming them together and hoping that I can make something new and interesting out of them. Hello, fellow weirdos. I'm Andy Negative, and today I'm gonna break down how I went about writing my song, Maybe I Should Get a Dog. So let's just get right into it. The song initially started out as kind of this poem that I wrote walking to work one day while I was musing on how depressing it is thinking about nostalgia and how things seem really interesting in the past, but then when you grow up and look at them again, everything is just kind of sad and depressing. Uh, <laughs> no, life's not really like that. I kind of kept tying it all together. This used to be great. Now it's depressing. I'm unhappy. Maybe I should get a dog and that will solve all my problems. Very tongue in cheek and just kind of me being silly, but that's the starting point. And this is a case of writing way too much six or seven verses is way too much for a song. This isn't the 1960s. You can't get away with stuff like that anymore. That's one of the things about songwriting that I think is a really smart approach is to write way too much and then you can kind of rein it back in. And that's what I did is I wrote way too much and then I was able to cut tons of it to make, you know, a nice, short, powerful song. So at the time of actually writing the song, I was really listening to Avril Lavigne's girlfriend a lot. I was learning to play it on the drums and I really liked that do ka do do ka bo diddly beat. And I really wanted to pay homage to that song because I think it's actually a fantastic song. Very well written. This opening section is entirely just that. It's my attempt at creating something similar to, but not quite as good as Avril Lavigne's girlfriend. And I think, I think it comes across that way. Maybe, maybe not. So these verses are a great example of how I took six or seven verses and I really pared them down to just two. You should write way more than you need and then you should edit the crap out of your writing. That way you can just find the best golden nuggets of your material and put them together to make something really, really good. I took six or seven verses and edited them down to two four line verses. And I think I really get the point across. The other thing about the verses that I think is really neat, uh, if I can, if I can, you know, hype myself up a little bit, is this is where the second inspiration for this song comes from. And that was the DuckTales themes song. In that theme song, they do this really awesome bass octave thing, and I totally stole that idea. As you can hear right there, it's just this bass guitar jumping up and down the octave in a DuckTales-esque pattern. Using octaves adds a lot of energy. It really grabs people's attention because you're doing this like huge jump in frequency range. It's very much like my Sharona as well, that kind of like really early rock and roll stuff going on in this song too. But the main inspiration for it was Girlfriend and DuckTales, and I kind of slammed those together. Maybe I should get In true songwriting fashion, it makes a lot of sense to vary the rhythmic approach to each section of your song. And in this section of the song, you can hear that staccato start and stop thing, which is something I like to do a lot. And I'm also bringing in that octave bass every so often at the end of the phrase to just kind of add a lot of energy to the section. Da, 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 da. Kind of like you're being punched in the face by the idea of the song. Also, initially, there was kind of this five to one whoa sound that I had in the original version of the song. But then after sending the mix off to a few of my friends, I decided to add in the awoo because I felt that that was more of a dog sound, right? It's good to send your ideas off to people that you trust because they can give you some valuable feedback. And one of the most valuable pieces of feedback I got on this song was that instead of whoa, it should be something more like a dog sound. So that's why we ended up with a woo, which I think is a lot more fun. And as soon as I did it and heard it for the first time, I was like, oh yeah, this is way more exciting. <laughs> As the tag returns there, I added in a synth. The synth is just there to reinforce the harmony, which is now something that starts to come in. And you actually hear it at the very beginning of the song to try to prime your brain for the idea that there's gonna be a harmony. That's just like a trick so that when it comes in for the first time, it's not the first time they've heard it. That's just like any sort of repeating melodic motif. It's always good to have it and you kind of prime people for it early and then you can bring it back later. And I also try to make it a sound I've never used before in a song. So whenever anybody hears that specific sound, it will hopefully be locked to this song exclusively, and uh, I just will never use it in another song. I've heard them say that I should give up on this art thing. Yeah, right, go get a real job, or maybe start writing jingles. 
one of the things I like to do when writing verses is to try to make them kind of like choruses that just have different words than the previous verse. I try to just try to constantly write hooks. So it'll be a similar kind of pattern. The words will be delivered in a similar meter, but will kind of progress the story forward. So the verses are about moving the story forward, whereas the choruses are about reinforcing the tag of the song. Always bringing you to the idea that if you just had money, you could get a dog and it would make everything better. Maybe I should get a dog. And in the second chorus, this is where we get the next big reference to DuckTales. Pretty much just girlfriend meets DuckTales only. It's about dogs. And I took this kind of string sound and made this like climbing call to action. This is a straight homage to the DuckTales theme song. This, a very similar musical idea happens in that song and I liked it a lot and I just thought that it would fit really well here in my song about dogs. is It's a song about ducks. <laughs> and uh, I, just, I felt that these two things went together well and I, I really like it. Every time I hear it, it makes me really, really happy. Money can't buy happiness. And then this kind of last little piece in the chorus, the Money Can't Buy Happiness bit. This is a total reference to a praise chorus by Jimmy Eat World. The whole chorus in that song is kind of this pop punk chuggy chuggy guitar thing where the chords are all palm muted. I really like that a lot. And then there's kind of this high falsetto vocal and I'm kind of doing a more high soft falsetto-y style vocal, just like paying homage to art that I really enjoy and throwing it into an idea and tumbling it all up and, and getting it out there. <laughs> And then something that I thought was really clever for the very end of the song is I, is I basically just switched the doggy call and then I had just a bunch of arfs. You know, like how a dog barks, it's, it's an arfing noise in the same rhythmic pattern as the vocal because it's a dog song. And we bring in those strings again too to really like reinforce that melodic idea because I thought it was really cool and I wanted to hear it again. And it's just something to try to make it interesting and different and try to make it fun. At the end of the day, this song was about trying to do something fun and taking inspiration from a bunch of places that I really liked and just stealing a bunch of ideas that I really thought were cool, smashing them together, mixing them up, and then pouring them out and seeing what kind of weird concoction I ended up with. I ended up with a dog song that sounds an awful lot like something from the 90s or the early 2000s, but with the production quality of right now. So steal ideas, but steal a lot of ideas and then mix them all up and make something unique and individual of, of your own because that's how the best artists have always worked. They've stolen ideas from a bunch of things that inspire them and then put them all together to make something uniquely their own. So I hope you found this video insightful, informative, or at least a little bit entertaining. Uh, if you did, please just obliterate that like button for the YouTube algorithm and you can check out maybe I should get a dog. It's available on all streaming platforms. Uh, make sure to follow me on Spotify if you're a Spotify user, and if not, you can listen to the song here on YouTube for free. Uh, I'm Andy Negative, and I'll catch you guys in another video. Bye! Maybe I should get a dog. I will. Maybe I should get